Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my best tips and tricks for using Google Classroom to help you organize your files and save you time. I previously filmed a tutorial video all about getting started with Google Classroom, so if you have not already watched that video, I do recommend you check that one out first and I will link it for you down in the description box. My first category are tips and tricks for creating and organizing your posts. My first tip is to reuse posts from your archived classes. These are classes that you used in previous years in Google Classroom, and I always recommend archiving them instead of deleting them because it allows you to still access the files. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into one of my sample Google Classrooms that I created in my last video. So this is Miss Frey's math class, and let's say I want to use a post that I used in my math class last year. I'm gonna go up here to the Classwork tab, and then I'm gonna click on Create, but instead of choosing an assignment, I'm actually gonna go down and choose Reuse Post. This will allow me to use a post I've used in another class, whether it's archived or not. If I wanna to go to an archived class, I'm gonna click this arrow up here, and you'll see I have this math class from the 2018-2019 school year. It says Archived. I can actually click on that and see all of the posts that I had in that class. So I wanna reuse this equivalent fractions assignment. I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to click the blue reuse button. It'll take a couple of seconds for it to pop back up, but you then are able to edit the title, the description, the file, the due date, the points, all of it. But if you wanna keep it exactly the way you had it last year, you may just need to adjust the due date and then you are good to go. So I already like the title, I like the instructions. I'm just gonna come up here and I'm going to choose a due date. Let's say I wanna make it due next Friday I click that and then I'm ready to go ahead and assign it to my class. It saved me so much time. I didn't have to type in the description. It is a super convenient way to reuse assignments from year to year. Tip number two is to differentiate your assignments by assigning them to different students. Let's say I have two different versions of an assignment, one for some students that are ready for more of a challenge and one for students that need a little bit more support. I can actually choose the specific students I want to assign it to. In order to do this, I'm gonna go up to the create button and I'm going to choose assignment. Now let's say this is an assignment on decimal fractions. I would type in my title, continue to type in my description, and in order to attach the file, I'm going to go to my Google Drive. And I actually was working on this the other night. So you can see that I have two different versions here. I'm going to choose this first one, click add. And you'll notice this is pink. When I differentiate my assignments, I typically like to put my students into groups based on color. That way my students can't really tell which group is which. Now in order to assign this only to specific students, I'm going to come up here to the all students tab and I'm going to click it. Then I'm able to select or deselect the students based on who I want to assign the assignment to. Let's say this one is my lower level one and I only want to assign it to myself. I'm going to deselect Mr. Pocketful Primary and William Emerson, and then it will only feed this assignment out to Michelle Ferre, which technically is me, but y'all know what I mean. Then I can hit assign and I'm going to hit assign as well. Obviously this is just a sample one. I'm not going into all of the details, but here is the super easy way to then duplicate this assignment. I already told you about reusing posts and previously I showed you how to do that from an archived class, but you can reuse posts from your current class as well. Again, I'm gonna go up to the create button and I'm gonna go down to reuse post and then I'm going to go back and I'm gonna select this current class. Then you can see I have that decimal fractions assignment that I just created. And again, I'm gonna hit the blue reuse button. Now, since it's going to pull up that previous assignment, I do wanna change the students that it's assigned to along with the Google Drive assignment that I attached. In order to specify the students it is assigned to, I'm gonna click the drop down next to all students. I'm going to deselect myself. That way I am only assigning it to Mr. Pocketful Primary and William Emerson. I also need to change out this document, so I'm going to exit out to delete it, click the Google Drive button, but this time I'm going to select the other one that I had created, 
add it and you'll see this one says decimal fractions blue because this is a different version and all I did was change the title to help myself know which assignment was which. Now ideally if this was a Google Slides assignment and you wanted your students to each complete it, you would also want to click the drop down and choose make a copy for each student. I am going to go into further detail on this in a future video so don't worry if that was confusing. Tip three is to use topics to organize your assignments. Now there are a bunch of different ways that you can do this. I personally choose to organize mine by quarter or marking period, but I know some teachers like to organize their assignments by unit number or even by the type of assignment. So feel free to take this tip and just put a spin on it and make it work for your own classroom. Creating a topic is super simple. I'm just gonna click on the create button and then I'm gonna click on topic. Now, personally, we actually call our marking periods themes. So I'm gonna call my first one theme one and I do like to use all capital letters because it just makes it pop. Once I click the add button and scroll down, you will see that it is now at the bottom of the page. Any assignments that I want to go into that theme, I can actually click and drag. Google Classroom did not used to be that simple. You actually had to go into the assignment and change the topic, but now they have really streamlined it and made it easier for teachers. So let's say I want to put the unit two quiz into theme one. I'm just gonna click it and drag it underneath. Now this does take a little bit of time to do at the beginning, but trust me, it is worth it. Along that same note, tip number four is to create a resources or notes topic and keep it at the top of your classwork page. So again, I'm gonna create a topic by going up to the create button and then clicking on topic. And let's say I provide my students with digital copies of their notes and I want them to have access to them all in one place. I can actually create a topic called notes. Once I've created that topic, you will notice that it puts it underneath of my other assignments. However, once you start categorizing those assignments, you won't have any up at the top and that notes will move up to the top. So let me actually show you how that works real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and just put all of these assignments down into theme one, even though they technically are not theme one. Now, as you can see, notes is up at the top of the page, which means students will see it immediately when they go to the classwork tab. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move my multiplication area model notes up to that topic. Now, I can take any assignments that I want to go under that topic and click and drag them. So, for example, my multiplication area model notes, I can click and drag them up to the notes topic, and that's going to make it super convenient for my students. My next category of tips and tricks is for grading. These will hopefully save you a lot of time and just make it more efficient for you when you're grading a lot of assignments for a lot of students. I'm gonna go ahead and go into one of my assignments. This is additive and decomposing angles, and I'm going to view the assignment. It will then pull up all of the students that have turned in this assignment. Now, I only have three students in the class, but imagine having a class of over 30 students. It can get very overwhelming, and you don't want to go back and forth between screens trying to open up different students' assignments. So a nifty tool I like to use is once I click on the first student's assignment, it will pull it up in a screen where I'm able to grade it over on the side. So once I look through the students and I see that they have gotten them all correct, I give them a grade of 24. Instead of going back to the original screen and then opening up a new one, I can actually move from student to student using these arrows. So if I click this student right here, it will actually take me to the next student or you can actually use the drop down and go to a specific student very easily. Tip number six is to create comments in the margin of students' work to help you grade. When I discovered this hack, I was blown away because it sped up my grading so much. Now this works really well if you are assigning your students Google Slides types of assignments. It may not work so well for other assignments, it really depends but I'm sure you could take this idea and adapt it to fit your needs. Now this particular Google Slides assignment is 24 slides long, which is a lot, and it gets difficult to keep track of how many points students have lost based on mistakes. So what I like to do as I'm going through, let's say I notice this is a mistake. I'm gonna actually click on it, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go to comment. And I would then tell the student, you should have used subtraction. I give them a note, let them know what their mistake was, and hit comment. 
you will notice that once that comment is posted, I now have this little speech bubble over here that tells me one. That means I have put one comment on that slide. Since this assignment is one point per slide, because it's 24 slides and 24 points, I can then look through all of the slides when I'm done, count up how many comments I made, and I know that that means I need to subtract that many points. So since this one has one comment, I then am gonna subtract one point, and I know that they then got a score of 23 out of 24. Now I know what you're thinking, you are already imagining how much time it's gonna to take to type out these comments for every single assignment for every student. But don't worry, my next tip number seven is to use a comment bank for your frequently used comments. Now there's two different ways you can add to a comment bank. Once you are in the grade format of Google Classroom, you can click on this icon right here to go to the comment bank and you can then click on add to bank. As teachers, we tend to use the same comments over and over again and we tend to have specific comments for different subjects. So I love to use the comment bank to save those comments so that I can easily use them with my students. One thing I'm constantly telling my students in math is to check over their work. So I can actually create a comment that says check over your work hit add, and you will notice that it is now saved in the comment bank. The other way to do this, and this is especially handy if you have a specific comment just for that one assignment, once you have made a comment on one student's work, you can actually click these three little ellipses over here and then click add to comment bank. You can then edit it if you need to. Maybe you put the student's name and you don't want the student's name in there. So once you make those edits and it's ready to go, click the blue add button. And again, this will save it to the comment bank. Now what I struggled with was then using the comments from the comment bank because it's not really clear how you do that and there is a trick to it. Once you want to use a comment from the comment bank, you are going to type the hashtag sign before you start typing the comment and you will notice that it pops up. So let me show you what that looks like. If I wanna add another comment to this slide, I can right click, again, go down to comment, and then I'm gonna type the hashtag or the Octothorpe. You will notice that your saved comments already pop up, but as you add a lot to your comment bank, there's gonna to be too many to find, so you can actually type in keywords and it will help narrow it down. So if I wanted to find the comment on checking your work, I can type in work, and you will notice that it then isolates that comment. I can click on it and I'm ready to go. I can then customize it, so if I wanted to add a student name or add something else to that comment, I can do that before hitting the yellow comment button. Tip number eight is to use your arrow keys to navigate the grade book. This is a huge time saver and it may be obvious to some of you, but you do not have to click from student to student within the grade book. You can actually use the enter button to go down or you can use your arrow keys to move around easily. I'm gonna click on the grades tab up at the top it will bring up my grade book. Obviously, I do not have a lot of students because this is a sample class, but as you get more students in your class, it does get more difficult to navigate. Let's say I start up here in this box. I can then hit the over button to move over to other assignments, or I can hit the down arrow key to move down to other students or move back up with the arrow keys as well. My last category of tips and tricks is other. These are just some random things that I've discovered that I thought would be of interest to you. Tip number nine is to create a customized header. I did mention this in my tutorial video, but I didn't really show you exactly how to do it, so I did wanna bring that to your attention now. I actually really like the themes that Google Classroom offers. However, if you teach a bunch of math classes, you may run out of math themed headers and you may wanna create your own, or if you just have some extra time on your hands, you may wanna create customized ones. I totally understand it. Now to make this easier for you, I have actually created a Google slide template that is already sized to what you need for the Google Classroom header. So I will link this down in the description box as a freebie. Once you open it up, you are able to fully customize it. So this is what the template looks like on its own. It is just a white rectangle, but you will notice that I have put some directions down here. You are able to change the background by right clicking and choosing change background. You can then choose a color or you can choose an image that you may have and then hit done. You also can add in text or images to fully customize it. Now I'm gonna go back to Google Classroom for one second. You will notice that there is already text up here. So keep that in mind. But one fun thing you could try is actually adding your Bitmoji. So if I go here, I could copy my Bitmoji and then paste it onto the slide and I could then maneuver it around wherever I want just to make it a little bit more fun for my students. Once you are ready to save this as an image, you're gonna come up to File, 
Then you're gonna select download as, and you're going to choose JPEG image. This will save it to your downloads. So once you go back to Google Classroom, you are gonna upload this photo by coming down to the upload photo button. You then can select a photo from your computer. There is the one I just created. I'm gonna click open. And then I'm going to choose select class theme. Uh, you may need to resize it. Google Classroom typically, there you go. It gives you a smaller rectangle, but then you can just make it larger and then click select class theme. And you will notice that it replaces that theme with the image you just created. You also will notice that it does put a dark kind of overlay to it. So keep in mind, the colors are not gonna show up as vibrant as they do on the slide. There is no workaround for that. It's just part of the way Google Classroom does it, but you still can customize this with text or images however you want. Tip number 10 is to use the find command to help you locate assignments. As you add more assignments to your Google Classroom, even organizing them into themes, it may be difficult to find what you want. But an easy trick is you can actually use Control F or Command F if you are on a Mac to search for a specific title of an assignment. So I have a Mac, I'm gonna hit Control F and you will notice this search box pops up up at the top. Let's say I want to find assignments on decimals, you will notice that it highlights these two and I can actually use the arrows to go from assignment to assignment. Tip number 11 is to make copies of your classes. At the beginning, I mentioned that you should always be archiving your classes at the end of the year instead of deleting them because once you delete them, you no longer have access to the files. But archiving them gets them off of your Google Classroom dashboard, but it does still keep the files so you can access them. At the beginning of each year, instead of just creating a brand new class, you can actually make a copy of a class that you used the previous year. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to come up here to the three lines to open up my menu and I'm going to come down to archived classes. You will notice I have the math class from the previous school year. In order to make a copy, I'm going to click on the three ellipses and then I'm going to click copy. I can then rename the class. So let's say I want it to be math class 2019-2020. You can change any of the other information and then click the blue copy button. Depending on how many assignments you had in this class, this process can take several minutes in order for it to make the copy. Then you can go back to your dashboard by clicking on classes and you will notice the copy of the class that you created. When you click on it, you will notice all of your announcements and posts are gone. However, they actually are under your classwork tab as drafts. So click on the classwork tab and you will notice that all of the assignments are there. Now, this archived class did not have a lot of assignments in it, but no matter how many assignments you had, they will all show up as drafts. This is a huge time saver for you because instead of going in and individually creating assignments, even reusing the ones from the archive post still takes time. But if you copy the entire class, you then have drafts of every assignment ready to go. So when you do want to post one, just click on the assignment, click on edit, and then you can change the title, the description, the due date, anything you want. And when you're ready to post it for your students, just click on the post button. Go ahead and click post and you will notice that it then shows up. It is no longer grayed out. It is available for students to see. And if I go to the stream tab, it is posted there as well. Tip number 12 is to create a class for early finishers. This is one of those things that I wish I had done much sooner. In math class, I constantly have students finishing early. And I do have early finisher activities available in my class, but on days when I have Chromebooks available to me, I want my students on them and using them. The best part about creating a class of early finisher activities is that you can invite all of your students to it. Now, if you're self-contained and you only have one class of students, Obviously, you're gonna add them all to that class, but personally, I am departmentalized and I teach multiple groups of students. And I do have a separate class for each of those groups, but I also have all of them together in my early finisher class. So in order to create a new class, I'm gonna click on the plus sign and click create class. And I'm going to hit continue because this is just a sample. I'm not actually using it with students. For the class name, I can type in early finishers, click create. 
Then I'm able to add all of my students to it by displaying the class code, which is available right here. I also can individually add students under the people tab by typing in their email. Once all of my students are in this class, I can post any type of activity that I want them to do, whether it's links to websites I want them to go on or different brain teasers that maybe I create in Google Slides. But I love that my students know exactly what to do once they have finished a Google Classroom assignment. Those are all of my best tips and tricks for Google Classroom to help save you time and to keep you more organized. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also share it out to your teacher friends because I'm sure they would love to see it as well. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher store, my merchandise store, and my Amazon store are in the description box, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.